with the flow. Flowstream.com. Welcome to the Will and Willie podcast. I'm Paul Wells here with Willie Brown and Will Durst at the epic roast house on the Embarcadero with the Bay Bridge, the Ferry Building, and right on the waterfront. How did they get to build this, Mr. Mayor? When you were mayor, did this come through on the blueprint? We permitted these two items through our Port Authority uh, many years ago, as a matter of fact. Yeah, because it's on the water side. You don't right. see nothing right. on the water well, side. Well, we had to pass on things when I was on the board of directors of San Francisco Beautiful to give a recommendation that it wouldn't spoil the waterfront to have something like this. But we had universal support for mm-hmm. these two exactly. uh, restaurants from not only the waterfront lovers, but from the neighbors adjacent there too, particularly uh, the Gap and Don Fisher. Everybody wanted something built on this site that would be reflective of the great art piece that happens to be there the and reflect and the total of the restaurant. There. And what they did is they literally Cupid designed that. two buildings and put probably $20 million into two buildings that do not look like they have invaded the waterfront. No, they kept them low profile. Right. So it didn't ruin the view of anybody else. In the and exterior of the two buildings look like they've been on the waterfront yeah. for a long time. Yeah. They don't, and they dedicated a considerable amount of the space that they were building on to actual open space so that in fact you can walk behind going to the ballpark you can walk behind these two buildings right you can literally or bike see, ride correct you can see how these two buildings became an integral part of the continuation of the waterfront over the last uh, week or so if you had dropped by here at 9 30 10 o'clock at night because of the nature of the weather it was absolutely unbelievable. Mm-hmm. The crowd of people, well turned out in every way. Mm-hmm. It looks like each of them had had the same budget that Sarah had for her. <laughs> <wearing> her. <laughs> yeah, slights me off a piece of that one, huh? <laughs> one hockey mom that we know yeah. doesn't spend 150 grand at Saks. <laughs> Saks in Minneapolis. And, you know, in Minneapolis and Minnesota, they don't have tax on clothing. Yeah. So, boom. I mean, they saved. You know, they should be talking about the money that they saved. And I loved her when they said that, uh, you know, at the end of the deal, she's going to give it to charity. You know what she's given to charity? It's what she previously owned. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's wearing her own stuff now. Did you see that? She's no, starting I didn't. to wear her own stuff. And you can tell the difference. <laughs> <Did you? laughs> yeah. No, I didn't. I, I've not. Yeah. But you, you also know that uh, I know my vision is not terribly good. But when I saw the Saturday Night Live piece where she was on at the same time as Tina Fey, I couldn't tell the difference. When they walked past each other without announcement, Mm -hmm. I didn't know which was legitimate. No, I did the same thing. Because first up was Tina Fey. And I'm going, okay, uh, her cheekbones are a little higher. You know, the bottom of the jaw might be a little wider. and, And then they cross. No, it's the same exact they, woman. I, they're yes, exactly. I mean, there is absolutely no difference in those two women at a quick glance. Yes. I don't know. You know, I'm going to check 30 Rock out on Thursday mm-hmm. night when <laughs> Tina Fey does her own program to see what she looks like in civilian clothing. But in those Walmart outfits that she's been wearing. Not Walmart. That Walmart no. outfit that uh-huh. she's been wearing. Those glasses and that $22,000 hairdo, she really has it. She really does have it. Now, there is talk about Sarah. There's grumbling in the McCain campaign. Uh, you, only, you don't hear a lot of grumbling when the campaign is ahead by 10 points. But when we're, we're at T-minus 7 today, and the grumbling that she's not following the party line script, that Rick Davis and Steve Schmidt are giving her to bolster the ticket, she's a diva, supposedly, out on her own, and for her own reputation. Do you really think, now, you assume that Osama has this nailed down, right? Uh, you mean Barack Obama? <laughs> you oh, said Barack Osama. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> what are you, you just, are you channeling Sarah Palin? <laughs> no, I love it. I love it. Well, there is, it's the first time. It's the first time in all of these broadcasts. <laughs> Obama. <laughs> Obama bin Laden, is that his name? Are we going to say Hussein, too? Let's just throw it I all in it. there. 
You were perfect. Iraq, you were perfect. Hussein, <laughs> Osama. Yeah, yeah you okay. say. You, you, you pretty much agree that... <laughs> He's got it nailed. That would be hard to lose with seven days left. I think it's almost impossible to reverse. He's over 300 electoral votes. He's going to win the state of Ohio. He's going to win the state of Pennsylvania. Both. He's going to win the state of Georgia. Wow. He's going to win Colorado. He's going to win New Mexico. He's going to win Nevada. The only state in my mind which is still in play uh, for decision is the state of uh, Florida. No, mm -hmm. the state of Florida. I think Virginia is already Obama. Uh, and I think it's... Virginia is already Obama because I think the Republicans did not notice, but Virginia has become an extension of, a, of, of Mexico. There are more Latinos in Virginia now than there are blacks. And somebody came up with a brilliant idea. Since they all go to the soccer matches, they went to the soccer matches to register people to vote. A woman named Rosa Rios, who is a local uh, activist on the on the Latino side, went back there and convinced her people they ought to do that. And they start registering four or 5,000 people per game. And lo and behold, they have turned that into a state that Obama can win. And in addition to Mark Warner, the candidate who was the governor of that state, may very well be in a position to win since Webb beat the incumbent senator right. a couple of years ago. Exactly. Uh, George Allen. Uh -huh. George Allen. Now, Warner is in a position, so that state could also be in the Obama camp. And my count and my tally says Obama wins the, I think, the popularity vote by about, a popular vote by maybe 10%, and he wins the electoral vote by maybe 5 As much as 10%? By what? Yeah, by 5%. Oh, by 5%. I thought you meant five votes. No, 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 by 5%. And that, that translates into somewhere between 25 and 30 additional electoral votes, which is where my 300 comes. There are 538 total electoral votes. You need 270 Correct. to win, because if you get 270, the other guy's got 268, so you win. There is a way where it can be tied, 269, 269, but it's a very complicated equation. I... I think we'll know we'll know we'll know at 5:07 p.m. on uh, Tuesday the 4th if Virginia and Florida are in are, are colored blue on your little electoral maps. Whatever you're watching, Katie Couric or or Charles Gibson or the other guy, uh, Brian Williams, uh, it's over. If Brock wins Virginia and Florida, it's over. But I'm actually predicting that McCain wins. You are predicting yeah, that. I am predicting uh, you know, that we'll Barack on the wins the popular vote and Barack uh, loses the electoral vote by about four votes. That's what I'm, that's, but I'm, I'm also predicting that the Senate, the Democrats pick up about 10 seats in the Senate. Gives them 60. 59 because of the two independents. Lieberman will become. And there will be another independent. I am predicting that Barkley in Minnesota will overtake both Coleman and Franken. You gotta be kidding me. No. I thought we were looking forward to Al Franken winning. We are, but I'm predicting that Berkeley's gonna win. Well, you are from that part of the country. You know that part of the country better than either one of us, and uh, I gotta now go back and reassess whether or not I he's should not that high grab the onto your coattails he's not that high and take in the a polls. look. No, he's not that high in the polls. It's like 30, 30, 17, but a lot, uh, actually, last couple of weeks has seen a surge because Coleman was ahead and now Franken's ahead by about six or seven. But didn't, Barkley makes a lot of sense. But didn't we have that particular <laughs> That's state That's the exact a scenario governor? that yeah. Governor Ventura actually rose up yeah. in. And I don't think Barkley is as When much Hubert Humphrey's son was supposed to be the guy That's right. went in the deal, That's right. as I recall. Yeah. And didn't. <laughs> and he didn't. Yeah. Well, uh, 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 the, uh, the, the uh, wrestler wanted yes, Jesse Ventura. Exactly. Jesse, Jesse the body of Ventura. And was very popular as a governor. For no. a minute. A, a minute. Yeah, he had a honeymoon. Yes. And then, and then he kind of antagonized both houses. He was houses. too bizarre in terms of his conduct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he tried to be a real guy, and people want a little bit of elegance. You know, they want a little bit of... You know, everybody says, oh, I want George Bush because he's like me. Yeah, but there's something about, it. whether you love him or hate him, there's something about Bush that has, you know, the bearing. All right, he may, he may be dyslexic, and I think that's 
what's responsible for all of his misquotes and stuff like that. And 